So let's talk about market structure. So market structure seeks to answer this question. What to do, right? What should you do in different market conditions? Should you be looking for buying opportunities, selling opportunities, or to stay out of the markets? So the way this works is that market structure, it helps you to define the current market condition. So you know whether to be buying, selling, or staying out of the markets. Make sense? So how do you identify right market structure? Or if you want to phrase it right, how do you identify the current market condition? Well, to do it right, there are two techniques I want to share with you. And bear in mind, there are more than two ways to do this. But I just want to share with you two useful techniques because if I share with you too many techniques, you get overwhelmed, you get confused, and you give up. Ah. So I'll just share with you two useful ones. Number one, candlestick chart. And number two, moving average. So let's have a look at this two right uh, in more details. So first and foremost, right, let's talk about candlestick chart. What exactly is this? So candlestick chart is a method of reading a price chart. So it's not the only way to read a price chart. You can use things like bar chart, Renko chart, etc. But we'll stick to candlestick chart for this, this training. And a candlestick chart, it consists of individual candlestick patterns. So candlestick patterns is something that you are probably familiar with. It looks something like this. This is one candlestick pattern. Could have a little bit of upper shadow and lower shadow. Sometimes this could even be, you know, let's say uh, a darker color one. Could be like, let's say in this case, black color or even red to signal uh, lower close, right? something like this. So this is what we mean by candlestick pattern. So a candlestick chart consists of many individual candlestick patterns. So it's just like a, a forest consists of many individual trees. So we will talk more about candlestick patterns later on, but for now, this is kind of like the macro, the big picture. I want to share with you how do you actually use candlestick chart to identify the market structure. So first thing first, right? Identifying market structure using candlestick chart. So there are three types of market structure you want to pay attention to. Number one is an uptrend. This consists of a series of higher highs and higher lows. So it looks something like this. Price hits higher, makes a pullback, breaks out higher, makes a pullback, and then breaks out higher. So when you take a step back and look at this, you can see a series of higher high, higher high, and higher low, higher low. Make sense? So this is what we call an uptrend. Next one, we have what we call a downtrend. So this is, in essence, the opposite. The price is heading lower over time. So down, it makes a pullback, heads down lower, makes a pullback, heads down lower. So if you look at this big picture wise, you see a series of lower high, lower high, and lower low, lower low. And finally, we have what we call a range market. This is where the price is contained between the highs and the lows, kind of like getting stuck in a box. So let's say price goes up, comes back down, goes up, comes back down, goes up, comes back down. So you can see that it's stuck between these highs and these lows. And this is what we call a range market. So let me share with you a few chart examples, right? So you know what we're talking about. So first one here, this is the chart of S&P 500. Let me ask you, what is this market structure? Well, I hope you can see that this is a uptrend. Why is it an uptrend? Because you see a series of higher lows, higher low, higher low, higher low, and higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high. Next one, what about this? Platinum. So I just want you to pay attention to this chart. Is this in an uptrend, a downtrend, or a range? So one tip that I have for you is that if you're not sure, take five feet away from your computer, just walk five feet back, look at the chart, right, and ask yourself, hmm, is the chart moving higher or lower, or is going nowhere? So if you look from left to right, I'm sure you can agree that this market which is platinum on the daily time frame, it's heading higher over time from left to right. And if you look at the more granular details, you see a series of higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high. Of course, I didn't draw every higher highs and lows on this chart. The main thing is just to pay attention to the major swing points, right, and see whether is it heading up higher, lower, or, you know, just stuck getting nowhere. What we call a range market. Another example, dollar against the Norwegian chrono. So what we can do is go use this, uh, this platform I'm using is called Trading View. You can click reset a chart and just zoom in, I mean, zoom out a little bit and then ask yourself, hmm, is this market hitting higher or lower over time? So we can see series of lower low, sorry, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low, lower low, lower low. We can see that this market is heading down lower. It's in a downtrend. And since the market, let's say it's in a downtrend, what do you want to be doing? I hope you are looking for selling opportunities. Why selling opportunities? Because this is the path of least resist resistance. Because if you know a market has been heading down lower over the last few months, there's a good chance that it will continue 
heading down lower. So you're going to look for selling opportunities. Likewise, if you see a market that's, for example, this S&P 500 heading up higher over the last few months or even the last few years, then you want to look for buying opportunities because this market is likely to continue higher. And you can see this is why we want first and foremost right, want to define the current market condition so we know what to do. To look for buying opportunities, selling opportunities, or to stay out of the markets if it's something that we, we don't want to trade, we're not comfortable with. So have a look at another example, this one again. Uh, UK 10-year guild, if you look at this chart, is this in an uptrend, downtrend, or range? So look from left to right, you can see this market making a series of lower high, lower high, lower high, and lower low, lower low, lower low. Okay, now let's move on into something different. How about pound Canadian? Now, this is this in an uptrend, downtrend, or range? It's a uptrend. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, right? It's a, it's a range market, right? Why is this a range market? Again, range market is where the price is contained between the highs and the lows. So it's contained between these highs over here and these lows over here. So one thing to point out is that this is not an exact level on the chart. You should treat this as an area. So if it helps, you can use tools like a rectangle tool to draw this as an area like this or maybe even another one over here. So this way you can treat this like an area on your chart. And this is another area on your chart between the highs and the lows. And this is where we call this market, or we treat this market as a range market contained between the highs and the lows. So one more example before we move on. This one here, silver. Is this in a range market or an uptrend? So if you look at the chart, right, as it is right now, I would say that this is in a range market. This market is contained between these highs and then these lows. But if you, you know zoom zoom out a little bit more, you might now say that this market could be in an uptrend, right? Yes, it could be uh, if you zoom out your chart like this, but I, was, I would argue more towards a range market as you can see that it's still stuck between these highs and these lows over here. Yep. So I would say that this is a range market. And of course, uh, what I've just shared with you is using candlestick chart to define the market structure, but it's not the only way because you can also use tools like moving average, which I'll cover next.